Phil's journey began in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, a suburb of Milwaukee, where he grew up with his mom, dad, and older brother. When Phil was 14, his dad suddenly passed away, changing everything. The family struggled and was forced to sell their home and move to an apartment. Phil worked to support his mom and still attend high school. The next chapter in Phil's life took him to the University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh, where he met his wife, Rosie. My dad and mom met at a bar, and uh, my dad actually pursued my mom at the bar, and she basically told him she wasn't interested. Rosie had just broken up with a boyfriend, and her friends had arranged a night out to lift her spirits when Phil met her for the first time. He wanted to buy her a drink, and she said, I'm not interested. And uh, he walked away and then he said, you know, I'm not gonna give up. So he walked back up and asked again. And she said she wasn't interested again, but then he kept talking and finally she said, okay, fine. Eventually, Rosie agreed to dinner. They began dating and later married. After college, Phil went to work as a sales rep for E.J. Brock and Sons in Milwaukee. I was quite impressed in as much as uh, he was one of the leaders in our, uh, in our region as far as sales. He's a sharp man, a fellow that was uh, wanted to learn and uh, grow. Phil was successful, and Brock recognized Phil's efforts with a promotion and a move to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where he worked under Fred Mueller. Phil was <laughs> very uh, organized, very, to me, intelligent. He showed his, his uh, talent uh, pretty quick. The next three years were bustling with activity. Phil became a new dad with the birth of son Jeff, and work kept him busy as he endeavored to build a prosperous sales career with Fred as a boss and mentor. I've learned so much from Fred, says Phil. He's the consummate sales guy and one of the most influential people in my life. We were compatible. Uh, he had his world, and sure as heck I had my world, but together we brought the thing uh, to quite a success. Then, one Sunday afternoon, Fred called Phil and asked him to be his partner in opening a new brokerage business. With Rosie's encouragement, Phil made the tough decision to risk the security of a steady job and accept Fred's proposition. Well, I went to Phil and I, I laid the program out, the idea. He quit the Brock Candy Company, and it was quite amusing in that they had gone to him to replace me. And he said, I'm sorry, I, I'm going uh, to join Fred with the group. Phil continued to work for Brock until the day Mueller Yerge Associates opened its doors on April 26, 1975. That day, Phil quit his job at Brock, attended a Nash Finch show, and Rosie gave birth to Chris, the couple's second son. Phil and Fred struggled for the first few years, but got a big break when they were asked to represent a German company, the maker of a new sugarless mint called Vela Mints. Backed by a national advertising campaign, this large volume line brought Fred and Phil income to reinvest in the company, and they added more employees. It was a pretty rough time at the beginning. I don't think we could have really survived without Phil. That's why he, we started together. Our biggest asset is our people, says Phil. As we grow, we always add people. I never felt like I worked for Phil. I never felt like I worked for my dad. I felt like I worked with Phil, and I worked with my dad. A second big break launched Bueller Yergay's grocery division when Malto Meal asked Phil and Fred to sell their popcorn balls. Toastios and other breakfast foods made by Malto Meal soon followed. Since opening its doors, Mueller Yergay Associates has experienced 38 years of continuous growth. Phil is proud to proclaim that the company has never had to let anyone go. It goes back to the thought that Phil, my dad, Mueller Yerge have never lost sight of the fact that we're not going to take no for an answer. We're going to explore it, we're going to give our customers options, and from those options we're going to end up saying to the customer, yes, we're here to serve you. 
Today, Mueller Yerge has offices in Denver, Kansas City, Omaha, and Minneapolis. And they recently completed a 13,000 square foot expansion of their Iowa facilities. Our success, uh, a large part of it comes from Phil Yerge, who set goals for the company as well as himself and always followed through uh, in great detail. Mueller Yerge Associates provides a livelihood for 150 employees and their families. We all talk about the Mueller Yerge family and they all really do feel like a family and you can see that when you're around them and that I think is a true, true reflection of Phil and Rosie both and how they wanted to build that company. The atmosphere at uh, Mueller Yerge is outstanding and uh, that is recognized by the lack of turnover within the organization. It was created by giving each associate, not employee, the uh, latitude and having the faith and trust in their abilities and talents to grow the business. But his greatest achievement by far is his own family. I'm so proud of my sons. Jeff and Chris have grown up to be good people, says Phil. The fact that they're part of the company and are successful, well, that's just frosting. At the time, you sold candy, and you know what kids don't like candy. So you know, it's, your dad was always the candy man, and we had show and tell at school. I would, I would bring my dad. So <laughs> it was great growing up in this business. Certainly, was at grocery stores a lot growing up with my dad. I remember going to the Food for Less on Southeast 14th Street and building a huge display of chocolate turtles and uh, wearing a turtle suit. What I admire and respect most about my dad probably is how much he's loved within our company and respected, being a, a salesman um, and, and also a leader. He's just a great guy. Um, he's not afraid to, to do anything. Um, he dresses up head to toe in, in uh, Packer gear and paints his face. And uh, you know, he, does, he just doesn't care what other people think about what he's doing. You see him on a day in, day out basis, being a leader of a company, and then on a, on a Sunday, Packers game, how he just turns into a kid and, and, and lets that all go. Phil gives Rosie the credit for raising the kids and for being his how to live life counselor. Rosie was the human resources director for Mueller Yerge until the couple retired in October. Phil, who says that he hasn't played since he was 12, is looking forward to playing with his four grandchildren. His son Jeff has sons Carter, Jackson, and William, ages seven, nine, and 11 while son Chris has one seven-year-old daughter, Lexi. Over the course of time, he has evolved into an extraordinary man, a man that has identified what's important in life, a man who has identified what is to be valued, and that, to me, is probably the biggest influence that I've garnered from watching Phil grow over the years. You know, I think the biggest lessons I've learned from him is just uh, to treat people the right way. You know, it's something that he really has driven home with my brother and I, and even with our partners in our business. Phil really stands for exactly what this award was designed for, which is to recognize somebody for their years of service and dedication and the impact that they made in the grocery industry.